Hey, my name is Michaela McLeod and I am an early childhood um, education student and I chose my system on the reproductive system because um, I wanted to specifically um, have my articles on neonate, um, so like neonatal care and things like that. So, for, um, so I work with infants and I want them, I wanted to know more about that. So, the first article that I chose was a medical study of an infant who had oral thrush. And I've never, like, really thought about what it was or, you know, I just knew that it created a white tongue um, on the children. So, it's about a medical ca case study and the there is a couple important things or, in, like, interesting points that I noticed. Um, but the first one was that thrush can happen due to, um, like, the infant or neonate coming out of the birth canal. Um, the infected skin, like, of the neonate sucking the mother's nipple. Or due to, like, a pacifier that's, like, fallen on the ground, you know, and bacteria getting on it. So those three different things can cause oral thrush. And I never, like thought of that. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, an oral thrush is a, caused by a fungal named Candida. Candida. <laughs> One of the interesting points is that five to seven percent of babies less than one month old develop thrush. And I thought that was pretty interesting because like I've seen it a lot uh, with the children that I work with. So that little percent is pretty, I thought that was pretty good. but. Um, and then, so oral thrush is starting to increase though among neonates and it's very important for the mothers um, of the neonates to make sure that, you know, they're, um, if they do have an infection that they take care of it and secondly to use proper pacifier hygiene. So I thought that was another interesting point that I noticed throughout the article. And then secondly, it is also important to know the different types of antifungal ancient agents um, use with the child. So just to know um, is important. I thought that was really good for even as an educator to know with the babies. Um, so then the second article was on neonatal hypoglycema. And so this is important during the neonatal period because high levels of blood glucose can damage um, infant development. So however, low levels of glucose d levels can lead to permanent central nervous system damage. And I thought that was really interesting that even though it's high, it can do damage, and even when it's low, um, their blood glucose is low, it can also do damage. So it's like you have to find the right in between, and I thought that was really interesting. Um, so this was a study that was sent to the pediatri pediatrics and neonatologists to see what they know about neonatal hypoglycemia. So. Both, in the study, both um, knew about the same about hypoglycemia in neonatals, or in neonates. Um, let's see. They all knew that it can cause damage in procedures to address low blood glu glucose levels in infants has been implemented. So they know that. However, some interesting points from this article is that any dietary problems and glucose levels during the pregnancy of the mother should alert, um, you know, doctors of uh, lower or higher um, hypoglycemia in neonates. So I thought that was really interesting because um, you wouldn't really think of it like it being passed on, but it can. So you need to, you know, that can be like a, almost like a risk. Um, and then also, secondly, the neonatal care team should be focused on the risks of hypoglycemia. This way, they know exactly what needs to be done. They also believe that the blood glucose test strips have been have made finding out if um, neonatal hypoglycemia is it possible for as a possibility for an infant. And I thought that was really interesting because I didn't even like you know know much about these test strips or anything, but I thought that was really interesting. Um, so then thirdly, the third article was on the outcomes in relationship to the timing of cesarean deliveries. And I thought this was really interesting because one of my cousins has had many of these and 
Um, although she has had them on her due date or when they've been scheduled, she hasn't like had to have them earlier. I thought that was really interesting to learn about. I've always thought that cesarean deliveries are really interesting. So this was a study done to see the outcomes associated with emergency C-section performed beyond a mother at 37 weeks gestation. So it was 37, 38, and 39 in 40 weeks that were done. Um, so the interesting point here in the article was that um, that they found that any deliveries before 39 weeks um, gestation, that there was a variety of neonatal outcomes due to this type of delivery um, at 39 weeks or before. So some of these outcomes were death, respiratory distress sy syndrome, sepsis, jaundice, having to use CPR on the neonate, or ventilator support. This article stated that delaying CS or also known as um, cesarean section until 39 weeks of ge gestation is a must. So that's one of the things they learned through this study is that um, that it should be at 39 weeks or 40 weeks. So so. Um, so all of these articles were very interesting for me and I learned a lot um, within the age level that I work with and I thought that they were really interesting. So that's why I wanted to focus on neonatal care and you know, neonatal medicine because that's where I'm at right now and I wanted it to help me out. So anything to make me more knowledgeable about, you know, the babies that I work with um, was great. So a point of knowledge that I gained from the overall reproduction system is that what is going on while the mother is pregnant. So that's what I wanted to focus on was the pregnancy, you know, neonatal care, um, prenatal, postnatal, all that stuff um, is very important to the baby's health. So whether it be keeping, um, be keep it, the mother keeping healthy, you know, to prevent mastitis, which causes oral thrush, or staying healthy during your pregnancy, which can, you know, if they're not staying healthy, hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia can be caused. And when it comes to the time of the delivery, so trying to keep them all, you know, trying to keep the infant or neonate in the uterus as long as possible is a must that I've learned. Um, so all of this will help the neonates to be more healthy and have a better, healthier life overall. So that's what I've learned um, with this um, with this assignment. So I hope that I can use the information in my career. Thank you.